Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham! Presents with me, your host, Valerie, and sometime kitty co-hosts, Ms. Purrington and Mookie. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. In addition to podcasts, Comedy Wham! brings you articles, album reviews, our advice column, Rochelle Takes on Comedy, our festivals page listing upcoming festivals across the country and the world, and our 2023 FPIA contest page. We're best known for our events page for live comedy shows in Austin, Houston, and DFW, where 100% of the entries you see come from comics and producers. If you want your show featured on the calendar, click the Submit a Show button from the top of the home page or the events page to complete the short survey. It's free and easy. Tag us on your Instagram stories and we'll share your show promo to our Instagram followers. Want to support these resources that we provide? You can donate to Comedy Wham! on PayPal, Venmo, or even Patreon. Click the Support CW icon on our homepage at the top right to see the ways that you can help us. Now back to our podcast. Launched in 2016, the podcast project brings you funny people and their stories. As a fan, I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations, and we usually take a detour along the way. Consider the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. If you like this podcast, please rate and review us. And that, please do review us because uh, the reviews that we have out there are a little bit old. So help us out. Review us. Okay, today, uh, we fell in love with her when she did our isolation comedy shows back into t- in 2020 on Twitch. I think some of them are still up. She does not wear an outfit more than once if you look at her Instagram feed. Uh, She's the host of Hear Me Bitch, the podcast and the comedy show. She's been on Moon Tower Comedy Festival, the Come and Take It Festival, and Austin Chronicle rated her one of the five Austin comics not to miss at the 2022 Moon Tower Comedy Festival. I might know the person who had something to do with that. And she is... uh, she. Mm, I, I don't know how to word this because there's a lot of words here. The 2021 Austin, is it 21? Austin Comedy Film Festival Best Comedy Film Winner? I feel like that's more recent. Uh, for her appearance in Millennial Tiny House USA! Exclamation point. Uh, and now Comedy Wham! presents our guest, Leah Sampson. Hello. Hi. <laughs> wow, usually when someone has like a sheet of paper that's about me, it's the doctor. So this is a nice change. <laughs> Um, and all positive things. All positive yeah, things. Yeah. Thank yes. you for that. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Is, wasn't that millennial thing more recent? No, that was. Too, was it really? Did, did I send this to you? No. Okay, just, it's still I'm good Googled. stuff. But yeah, Google. I was like, look at me being responsible and like actually sending a bio. <laughs> um, no, I, I, that was yeah, that was like 2000. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's time has been going. Good lord. Yeah. Wow. That was like, yeah, wow. 2021. Hmm. Well, uh, Leah, we were joking about this. It's been a long time. We've had like these near misses of getting you on the podcast. Yeah, I know. Uh, and ever ever since your appearance on the Isolation Comedy Show, like I knew about you before mm. then, but once you were one of our comics and like one of our go-to comics mm-hmm. i'm like oh my god i need to talk to her and it's just never worked out and it finally has worked out and, is, and, <laughs> and you know what it works because i'm now i'm way more successful than uh, i was when you originally found me exactly. so yeah it, it works for both of us it's you know <laughs> back then i would have been like yes i'm a bartender <laughs> You know, still am, but now a different, better place. Yeah. So we're, we're evolving in life. Nice, nice. You know, but yeah. So I know I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to finally yeah. get, it, get it going. It's yeah. been a while. I and feel like I know you, but like, yeah, you right. know, <laughs> not like this. So. Right. Um, so I, I have an official icebreaker question, if you're ready. Yes. It is one word to describe your past. <laughs> <laughs> 400 words popped up in my head. Uh, the first word that popped in my head was traumatic. Oh. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Well, the other one was um, another T word, uh, toxic. Oh. Um, and, uh, yeah, those are the two words that popped up. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> it's And another T word, true. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah. I'm checking my... I need to look at my thermostat. I feel so, such great empathy for you. You walked, I know you probably oh, don't I'm want I'm cooling down now. No, I okay. feel good. All like, right. I, I got some water, sure. I got some ice. It's All just. Right. I got to keep an eye on this because it'll reset on me and it's very annoying. Thank All you. All right. So if you do get toasty, just let me know. Signal. <laughs> Go I got gotcha. you. Just keep fanning moment. out the under boob sweat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. 
Uh, where did you grow up? So I grew up in Houston, Texas. Okay. I grew up like the southwest side. Okay. Of Houston, it's kind of like older uh, hood. Drake is always trying to fall in love with somebody down there <laughs> and gets his heart broken every time. Um, yeah, so it's uh, yeah close to the trenches, I guess you could say. So I grew up there, and then um, I'm, I moved um, probably around like I was in high school, middle school, or no, younger actually, um, to Cyprus, which is like the suburbs. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Was that a culture shock for you? Everything. It was, yeah. it was, I literally, I remember when I first started comedy, I used to make this joke where like, I, I didn't know that white people existed, like <laughs> besides television or like nice. the doctor's office. Like literally I did not know, like where I grew up, it was nothing. It was predominantly, really it was predominantly black, but it was predominantly like, um, uh, Middle Eastern, Indian, Asian. It was like literally like everything, everything but. except, but white yeah. people. And really like my name, my street specifically, we were like the only it was like me and like one other black family on that street. Yeah. Everyone else was like immigrants, basically. Yeah. Um. So that was what I was used to. You know, I was used to growing up like that, and you know, catching the bus and just being around black people, and yeah. you know, having resources uh, nearby, and um, you know, even when like our like I grew up off eating like Vietnamese food just because that was like our community. You know. Yeah. So yeah, and then I go from that to Cyprus, yeah. where now, like literally, I'm the only black person everywhere, and um, and it is just like, well, it was still diverse, but it was like different yeah. diversity. It was like diversity with like real opportunities, you know? And um, yeah, it was just, <laughs> I remember uh, before we moved, it was like a town hall meeting in my house, because we're like, okay, we're about to go be with the whites now y'all so act accordingly okay and I'm like I'm so young at the time I you know I'm not really understanding you know yeah. and uh I remember my dad made a joke he was like uh Leah's about to have a white boyfriend and I was like what and I was like and everyone laughed at me I was like what what what, what, what does this mean I was like don't don't wish this witchcraft on me oh my gosh. but I mean but I understood I, just, I didn't know what Cyprus was but yeah when I moved there yeah. I was like oh so yeah it was different it was everybody had cars and nice cars and streets, no potholes, and kids had like clean. Cl well, also that's the thing too. Um, where I grew up, and like, it's it's kind of the dynamic is kind of funny. Where it's like private school, like upper higher class, like levels of learning. It's like a uniform, yeah. and then like poverty, like inner city is a uniform. You know, uh, with clear backpacks and like mm. uh, metal detectors. Yeah. And so it was interesting too because they were like, my mom, she was like. We're going to go school shopping. And I was always so used to going to uh, the places that had, like, the uniforms. And she was like, we went to Ross. And I was like, what did I do? <laughs> I was like, did I do something good? Like, what's happening? Uh -huh. And she's like, no, at this, at this, like, you, there's no uniforms. And so that's when I was like, oh. damn. I'm like, they get to wear whatever they want and, 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 and have, you know, a car. And this is crazy. So, yeah. And again, what age were you? I had to have been probably, it was fifth grade fourth grade okay yeah so t was that 10 9 10 or something yeah something like that yeah yeah okay yeah yeah but prior to that it was like houston all i knew was southwest yeah. side of houston yeah yeah okay so from from that story i've i've picked up that it sounds like your dad has a sense of humor um wait <laughs> or <laughs> Well, I was going to say, well, he married my mom, and she's a tough cookie, so you got to have some kind of humor. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my stepdad. Yeah. So, so did was was comedy in, in some way, shape, or form a part of your life growing up? A hundred percent. Like, I will say, like, my, my real dad, my stepdad, my mom, I mean, just hilarious. Like, yeah. very, very, my, my stepdad, he's kind of funny in a way of, like, just kind of like making fun almost. Uh -huh. My mom, she's more of like the dark humor, which I think is where I get most mm. of my humor from. She's like the, the cutthroat. Like she'll say some oh, that's stuff Leah. to you where it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like why is she not in jail? But also <laughs> keep talking, say more. Um, and then like my, my birth dad is like, just like goofy, just very goofy. And I remember like when he would call, uh, you know, once every 17 years, um, he, he uh, at least not from jail, uh -huh. but, um, yeah, he would just like, we, we would just like, I remember just like making like skits almost on the phone, huh. like he'll 
answer with like an accent and act like he was like a telemarketer and then I would be like the customer and we do like play along and you know (laughs) things like that so like it's funny because comedy I never thought of stand-up at all at not even as a hobby like Uh as a career but comedy definitely was like a huge thing in my family my parents were always watching Def Comedy Jam and uh, just any comedian really that was like good and that they liked um yeah and I think Actually, that yeah, my stepdad and I, I do feel like that was a bond we had was like just talking shit yeah. and humor and <laughs> making jokes and you know, which is why I, I really am thankful for that and I'm thankful that I did move from where I grew up to suburbia basically because it, I think it really just helped me because um, I like observational comedy. I like comedy that like you know you could tell that this these jokes are coming from an experience mm-hmm. and I feel like. Because of that, I've been, I would say successful, at least just in my writing to myself, Yeah. Um, that I'm able to have these different perceptions and perspectives and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, before I, I let it get, the thought get away from me, I do want to say I watched your Don't Tell special and it's, it has actually been a, a long time since I've seen you perform live Yeah. and that special uh, really showcases that you're an observational comic, but you're also really, really, really good at misdirection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, and oh relationships my God. and comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I Thank guess you. the, yeah, the, uh, so it's, it's inter- interesting to hear like your, you know, the things that you grew up with and the, the things that you picked up from, you know, your, your parents in different ways. And I'm like, Oh, there's, and, and I like hearing when people say, you know, my family was really funny uh, because I feel like in that way, there's kind of a natural ability yeah. uh, as, as a comic. You have to refine it and write sure. and practice and whatever. But there's also like, if you've been growing, see, there it is, <laughs> uh, if you've been growing up around it, it's, it's like, well, you've been training all these years. Right, right. So. Yeah, and I will say, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Also, uh, believe it or not, uh, I was bullied so much, what? so, so, so much growing up. Like, I, I didn't stop getting bullied probably until, like, my junior year of high school. Oh, my God. And so with that also, that's kind of where, like, I feel a lot of my, um, com- hum- like, my, you know, my mouthpiece, basically, yeah. I, you put it came from because people would tease me. And so I would just, you know, come at them with that fire and, yeah. and shut that shit <laughs> down real quick. And of course, as years gone by, I got better, and then I got cuter, and I was like, "Oh, I'm I'm dangerous." <laughs> I was like, "I am are. dangerous right you now." Are. So, um, yeah, you know, the misdirect thing, I that is like the most. That's my funnest part. Is that word the most fun for me to do yeah. when writing? Because I like that kind of comedy as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what's his name? Uh, I just watched his video today. Vaughn. Um, uh, he's a comedian. Is white dude mullet. Theo? Some, Theo. Okay. Like Theo Vaughn, uh-huh. you know, like, you know, comics like that or like, um, uh, who, who else? I'm trying to think. Oh, Beth Stelling kind of does that too. I don't know. I just, I just love that form of comedy. And yeah. also for me, it's kind of liberating because I, I feel like people always have an idea of me. Mm-hmm. They think they know exactly who I am and how I am and what kind of person I am. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, honey, you have no idea. I was like, I don't even know. Like, sometimes, like, if 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 you knew, if I knew exactly who I was and who I am, I wouldn't be on medication. Like, we would, <laughs> you know, we'd have it figured out, you know. Yeah. But it's fun for me. So I, I kind of do like that, doing that to people. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's like, one, you already have this, con- this perception of me. Mm-hmm. And then, two, it's like, well, if you already have this perception of me, you think that this is how this joke is going to go. Right. And then when it doesn't, you're like, oh, well, who is my real mom? You know, it's like, now nah, you're questioning yourself <laughs> and it's like, checkmate, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah. thank you for, I, I, I appreciate those kind of yeah. compliments. <laughs> sure. So, uh, you know, I, I look at your Instagram feed, you're, you're popping up, like you're following the algorithms, you're <laughs> posting like all the time and, and you do a lot of even misdirection with your your posts like mm-hmm. you post a cute picture of yourself and then maybe one of your your posts like text posts and then like it, the series continues and then there's like a goofy end image yeah <laughs> so uh I, I don't know why i mentioned that i just want to make sure that i pointed out that mm-hmm. your instagram feed is really fun to, to watch Thank because you. there's a little element of that misdirection that you even do on social media yeah uh I want to go back 
in time to uh, did you ever do any kind of performance when you were in school or were you like bookworm and head down and you know roasting people trying to bully you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes um <laughs> teachers included nobody was safe I was like I'm so sick of all y'all <laughs> leave me alone um but no um yeah actually truthfully I always wanted to be an actress mm. that was the thing um when I was younger I kind of like discovered dancing basically pretty much when I was like four that's when it was like oh she she's a dancer like you know we're gonna try to do dancing but for whatever reason financial or just you know whatever my parents never put me in in it um so uh I kind of but I still always like kind of like uh did it but then like I don't know like I think middle school is when I was like I want to be an actress because um uh they had theater and I remember they did this three thing rotation as a sixth grader where you could take like art for six weeks, theater for six weeks, and then music for six weeks. Oh, cool. And then you can decide, so you can decide next semester yeah. or next whatever it's called, um, what you want to do. And I remember I did theater and I just, I was like, this is it. Like, mm. this is my home. This is, this is, cause I've always been like a, a nut job, you know, like a <laughs> class clown goofball or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I just fell in love with it and uh, shout out my theater team. Honestly, like I told her this and um, I stand by it. I mean, I think I would have done something with acting or something, but <clears throat> the reason why we're here, I'm, I feel like I'm here in my career, just existing in this industry uh-huh. is because of my theater teacher, Ms. Hall. Oh she is, I mean, she was so... She loved kids, like you could tell, but she loved theater too. She she and she was she was just good at it. And I remember, um, I would stay after school, and she would stay with me for hours, like just grading papers, because I wanted to practice and rehearse, because I didn't have a place to do that. At and uh, and she all and she she really was like an acting coach. It was the like I was like in sixth grade, and she was talking to me and like teaching me and guiding me like a real acting teacher. Yeah, and it just lit a fire under my ass and it just I just continued and uh then I went to high school did theater there and then high school was kind of shaky I kind of got more into like sports and things like that um kind of stepped away from theater and then yeah didn't really touch it didn't really think about it at that point I was like okay college that's the thing I need to focus on so I was just doing things that I was good at which was you know dancing and cheered and all that kind of stuff sports mm. um and then yeah my focus was just college n- nothing about the arts at all mm. it was college 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 so yeah yeah did you stay in houston for college or did you go no I, did i do I, oh you know i did i did some courses here i mean in, in houston yeah yeah so uh i uh took some classes at community college out there and um, I won't shout them out because they're not sponsoring um <laughs> and yeah so I, I was there and it was an interesting time I was 18 and I had um and and, and you know high school was shaky too because like just the whole transition of all that to college was shaky because my senior year I ended up um basically becoming homeless and um, not legally emancipated, but that kind of yeah, that yeah. kind of deal. So basically, my whole childhood and whole like just it's always been issues with family and things like Traumatic that. Traumatic and toxic. Oh family. yeah, honey. Right oh yeah. yeah. Which I li- I love. I I I, I embrace it now. But uh, it's the truth. It, it was. I mean, it's tough when you're that age and you yeah, every, your world turns upside down. Yeah, like it, it was. It's crazy when I think about childhood, like that, just that past and all that. It's like. Half of it, I remember like, oh, I remember doing this and this and this and this and this and this and that. Yeah. And then the other side, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I remember like, you know, so it's like, I don't know. It's, it's just kind of one of those things where I just feel like I existed. Like, I just, I was just there. Survival mode. It was all survival mode. Yeah. And then I remember, so I had to like drop out of school. I was like living at people, like friends' cars and like, you know, and and it was, it was, I was like, li- I was like sleeping in this guy's car that I was dating at the time because he was 22 and he, yeah, why was he dating me? Who knows? Um, it, it's Texas and, um, <laughs> you get what you can. Yeah. And, uh, but that was crazy. Cause like his mom was white and she was racist and she didn't <gasps> like me. And so she didn't know. So you have to sneak me. Oh girl, my, oh, my toe all book is going to be lit. Yeah. Like move over Charlemagne. Like my, 
the New York's bestseller is coming real quick because I got some some stories. But um, but I will also I think that has helped me be observational because I've seen some things, I've been around some things, I've experienced some things, and I've always taken like little pieces, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So for, for just kind of smushing that all together. I ended up uh, getting taken in by this family who is now my God family. Mm. Um, I love them so much. And they are, they were like, go back to school. You know, you got to get some kind of education, mm. right? So I was going to get a GED. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. I was like, I just, I was like, well, rappers have GEDs. I was like, maybe I could be a rapper. But I was like, no, I want to go to school. Like, I love to learn. So I went to the school, aka the, where the pregnant girls go. Uh, <laughs> where they disappear and then come back, you know, oh, yeah. uh, the next year, uh, with a fat ass and, you know, nice little body. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. And I went to that school and I was working two jobs at the time and I graduated, got some scholarship money, um, for good grades. And cause I was just like, I don't know what the hell I'm about to do now, but I, I need to, I don't want to depend on nobody and I don't want to be stuck out. So then I got a job at the bank, and then I started working on, like, some CPA work, and I was work bartending, and I got my car, got my first car, got my apartment, and I just, like, okay, right? Like, this is what it's supposed to be, right? And I was just like, no. Like, I, mm. I, I felt so empty, and I was like, but why? You have money now? You got $400 hair on your head? Like, why are you... What's the problem? And you're like 19. Oh, I had so much money. It was ridiculous. Because I'm frugal as hell. So, like, I don't really spend money on anything. Yeah. So, I just, like, had money. Bills are paid. Cash car, you know, at 19. Um, oh, I had so much money. Where did that? What happened? <laughs> I had so... You know, Valerie, I had so much money. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I was eating, like, sushi every day for lunch. Like, it was... Wow. <laughs> it was ridiculous. But, um, yeah. And so, I was just like... I, I, so I, I was I was like I need something different I just broken up with my boyfriend I was like something has to give and so one day I just like had a day off and I was like let me go to Austin let me just go to Austin uh-huh. and just check it out you know and I came here and I was like I'm moving here so uh, I, tr- I transferred from that college to the commu- eight, the college that's out here <laughs> Again, no. <clears throat> Not going to get it from me. I love it. You um, value your brand. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's kind of how that college situation happened. And then transferred here, um, doing more, you know, studying business and accounting and things like mm-hmm. that. And then um, I was at a bar, working at a bar. And the people that worked there, I'd always like talk trash to them and joke with them. And they were like, you should do stand-up. And I was like, that's so stupid. No. Um, and I was like, that's ridiculous. Oh, my God, Leah. And I, yeah, I was like, you're crazy. I was like, that look like a clown? <laughs> they just called me a court jester? <laughs> I was like, no. Because I didn't know nothing about stand-up. I really didn't. I mean, I knew comedians, but like, I never studied comedy. Yeah. And uh, they were like, you got, we, no, you need to go. So they're like, we'll take you. And I was like, no. They're like, we'll get you drunk and we'll take you. I was like, okay, what time does it start? <laughs> And then, yeah, that's kind of how it started. So what was your first open mic? <laughs> did, you, did you go straight to a showcase? I, you- it was an open mic that you know. I'm not going to say oh, it. Oh, okay. But um, it is, it was, uh, I don't think it exists anymore, actually. Um, I think the place still does. I don't know, but it was up, because uh, mind you, and you know, the way, the, 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 what is happening right now in Austin comedy is uh-huh. insanity. This was not around at all when I started comedy here. I started six years ago, and it was like maybe three mics a week. Yeah. Maybe three mics. Yeah. So, you know. So, yeah. So, one of the guys, one of the guys found out about this mic, and I went to it, and I, I felt I did well. Uh-huh. I felt like, yeah, I think I did well. People said I did well. So, I didn't really know what that looked like, I guess, but I was like, people were laughing at me. So, either with me or at me, I don't know, but. Did you come prepared? Did you, like. Yes. So, what's kind of funny is, like, I was like, I love a challenge. I'm such a psychopath. I love <laughs> a challenge. Like, I refuse to, to not win. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And so they were like, you know, you're going to, and then what happened? Oh, um, I was like, they're like, yeah, write something, you know, write something. I was like, I can't working. And then one of the servers was like, it's slow. I'll take your tables. And I was like, okay. And so I like ran to the freezer and I sat in the freezer for like, literally I sat in the, it was first the bathroom. No, I was in the freezer and I thought out in the bathroom (sighs) and I was just writing, just like, just writing Uh whatever I thought, you know? So yeah, I, I prepped that much, you know? 
And then I, and I think it was like, I think my first joke, I really hope I can find it. I wrote on a piece of paper. But I think it was about this Tinder date that I went on. And I don't know how it went, but I knew oh. it crushed. And as I got better in comedy, I tweaked it and it always yeah. did really good. But I don't know what that joke yeah. was. How, how did you feel that night being back up on a stage? It didn't matter that it was, you know, formal theater stage mm-hmm. or acting or whatever it was. All the stuff that you had been doing in junior high and into middle school, how did it feel to be back up on a stage? It felt natural. It felt very natural. Like, I love the stage. I've always loved the stage because I've done dance. I used to be on step team and recitals and uh-huh. theater and stuff. So I'm, I've always been used to, like, the stage. Um... Yeah, and, you know, it kind of felt, like, normal, though, because I feel like just in conversation, I'm always, you know, I feel like comedians, they think, well, no, this happens. Sometimes comedians, they're always trying to try out jokes with you in Uh conversation, and it's like, stop. Like, we're just trying to, trying to, like, this is supposed to be a date, not an audition, (laughs) you know, which is your number one problem. Do not date comedians, unless it's me. I'm a good one. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, don't do that. Um, But it's like, no, me, like, I'm just, this is just me. I don't try out jokes on people. Like, and, and I think that also, like you said earlier, like that helps with comedy. Like, you know, the comedians that, and no, no disrespect towards anyone, but you can tell the comedians that study the craft of comedy, respect it, love it. They have their favorite comics that they watch and they either try to mimic or maybe they try to do their own thing, you know, inspired by that. And, and then they become a good writer and then da, 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 all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, the comics are hilarious. They're just naturally funny. Yeah. They're just not, na- you just know it. That just you, the moment you get into the green room with them, y'all both are just cracking jokes and talking shit like, and, it, and it's organic. It's yeah. not, you know, so that's, I've always been this person. I, I'm just, I just, I'm ridiculous, yeah. you know? Um, and so I feel like I've kind of always been like performing, I guess, for people, but again, not like, like, I'm not an attention seeker. I don't. I, I'd rather people what? leave me alone. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm just really good at getting attention. Ah. That's the difference. I, I, I just get attention everywhere I go okay. for whatever reason. They think I'm stealing or they want to get my number. <laughs> I don't know. But actually, I was really nervous. But when I parked my car, I parked my car over there. I was like, ooh, this is not the neighborhood. This is a real nice neighborhood, girl. I was like, this is not the neighborhood for my car to be pulling up at people's houses. <laughs> I'm at the door. I was like, oh my God, I got my little, my little Harajuku buns in my head right now. I was like, this is somewhat, hopefully they think I'm the maid. Hopefully they think I'm a cute little Dominican woman that's trying to clean their bathroom because this, this is money over here, girl. But I won't say where you live so nobody comes up and pulls up. Yeah. But, um, Thank you. but yeah, I was like, ooh, I should have wore a suit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, so, so I don't really, I don't really, Ask for attention. I just, it, yeah, just, whatever. Yeah. Oh, so after that first mic, you were hooked. You were ready. Oh to yeah, do it. yeah. Yeah. It was like that bug. It was like spider man. Like that, that, that bitch bit me. And I was like, and then so after that, I again, I, I just didn't really know about stand up, and I didn't want to like just go into it and just keep doing. I was like, no, if I'm gonna do this, I want to learn it, know about it, and be good at it. Mm-hmm. So that's when I started going to mics, it shows too. I started going to other shows, other mics. Didn't really get, I didn't go up again from that moment. I didn't go up again probably until maybe like a month or two after that. Oh, wow. Because I just really wanted to like just watch, because I had never watched comedy either. Like Mm. I've never been like a stand-up queen ever. Like I've never really watched stand-up. I've never, I mean like literally I was that person. I was like, oh, Kevin Hart's the best. Like that's all I knew. (laughs) I was like, Amy Sh- Amy Schumer? I was like, Amy Schumer? Yeah, I've seen her around, you know? Like, that was it. I was like, I don't know stand-up, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. So, how long ago? You said you started six years ago, which mm-hmm. is astounding to me, because you okay. have, like, the chops of somebody who's... Oh, thank just, you. But again, I think it goes back to some natural I appreciate that. And, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. So, yeah, and the scene was so different before. Very COVID. different. And you, you ended up doing ended up doing uh as if that was a consolation you created your own show called hear me bitch Mm -hmm. which uh, i think i got to watch a few times i think i for the open mic version i signed up once and i'm like ooh, all these oh yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) and i think that was the very first time i ever saw you live oh wow and i'm like oh my god firecracker here oh thanks (laughs) yeah well well you know just doing what she can right yeah (laughs) You know, get it. you got to go hard when you're spending four dollars on parking. Like, yeah, figure it out, girl. <laughs> How long after that first open mic did you start 
that show? Maybe like nine months. I oh, think. so like the fire was definitely lit. Oh, it was there. so heavy, and it's like, well, and, and I give thanks to uh, Tanya. Uh, I, I don't know her last name now because I think she's married, but she actually ran that open mic. And it was called the Coven, mm-hmm. and it was an all female uh, thing. And then she was like, "Hey, I'm moving to Chicago." would you want to take over it? And I was like, challenge accepted, cool. And so, but I was like, but <laughs> God, God is heavy in my heart. We can't do that witchcraft shit. So I was like, let me turn it over to, um, again, like kind of with my, my whole brand is I like the misdirect. I like, um, not, not even just that. I like making fun of things. Uh-huh. I love making fun of myself, stereotypes. I, I think this whole new movement of cancel culture and sensitivity is such horse shit. It's so annoying. Uh-huh. It's, it's, that's, it's not fun. It's not fun. I like fun uh-huh. and, 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 and including everybody and making fun and just, you know, just like, that's fun, you know? It's like everybody that wants to get invited to the cookout don't like the rules. It's like, well, you know, it is what it is. And um, so at first, so it's like, yeah, the whole joke is like, all women do is complain mm. and bitch, which rightfully we should and we do. And so I'm like, I'm, what, I don't know what the it, you feel me? I'm like, I'm like, honestly, it's crazy that the percentage of suicide and murders, murderers is men. Cause I'm like, uh, honey, we are the one, we should be the ones, you know, knocking down doors. Um, but we were like, we'll do this tire instead. Men are like, I'll kill a person. We're like, we'll kill a tire. <laughs> He's, we gotta love him. Um, but, uh, yeah. And so she, so I, originally the name was, I think you might be the only person who knows this. Ooh. And your listeners. Ooh. Uh, the original name was supposed to be, I am woman, hear me bitch. Ah. And then, uh, for marketing issues, uh, Facebook, um, we cut it down. Uh, Brett Revoir, who is fantastic. Best friend. She's a Love astounding her. comedian um she was i think she, she was like working with the the that theater at the time and so she was like yeah we can't really do that name but how about you just cut it and i was like okay yeah like hear me bitch i was like that's cute that's good i like that because that can mean a couple of things and it still stands for what i wanted to stand for yeah and so that's how hairy bitch nice. came into play and then after the mic i was like i want to make this a show let's make it a show and then it became a show and i was like let's do a podcast and then it became a podcast and then i moved to new york and then things kind of went on hold and then the pandemic hit so uh, <laughs> wait i didn't know you moved to new york mm-hmm. what did, for comedy yeah so this was maybe like three years after this was like 2017 or 18 no Oh, geez, I guess it was pretty quick. Um, yeah, I was doing well. I feel I was uh, headlining things. I had went on the road with Julio Iglesias. Um, which My is, mom would die if she knew this. You know, it's so crazy. I don't even know how they found me. I just know their people reached out to me. And they're like, we, I, was, I ain't got, I, at the time, nobody was posting on the internet, uh-huh. which is crazy because I remember, <laughs> man, let me tell you, I remember <laughs> when I, I was doing comedy and talking to the comics because that's what you feel like you have to do. You have to talk to all these weirdos. And so <laughs> I'm talking to all these guys. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to start. I'm, a, I'm thinking about like posting clips online. They're like, that's a stupid idea. They're like, you shouldn't do that because you're, you're not good right now. And, you, and then you're going to have a bunch of like shitty clips online. Da, 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 da. And I was like, well, I'm getting booked. So I literally was like, oh, that's, I'm going to record it. And then now look, that's like everything. everything. People that, are yeah. posting nonsense and, and, and good stuff and just whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. It teaches them. Um, uh, I'm not bitter. I promise. I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm just tired. It's a me thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, things were going, I was like, okay, this is my career now. Like, mm-hmm. this is what I'm doing. I'm not in school anymore. I'm not banking anymore. I'm not in, in you know, finances. I'm bartending so I can do mics and, 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 and do shows and things like that. Um, because I tried doing, the banking job not to say it's not possible because a lot of people do a lot of tech and nine to fives here it just wasn't for me i couldn't do it i couldn't do both um so yeah so i was like okay now what so i was like new york or la i was like well by that time i had done shows in la so i was like okay i have a feel for california had never been to new york never done nothing but of course i knew like the scene out there was incredible still is uh, impeccable um so i was like let me just go spend a month in New York. Huh. Let me just move there. And so I just booked a ticket and <laughs> left. My uh-huh. lease was up, and then I just, you know, your lease being up will give you a good yeah. excuse to, you know, sure. do some, some shit. Yeah, yeah, some crazy stuff. And so, yeah, I moved to New York, 
for a while and it completely changed my life. I think if I did not do that trip, I either one probably would have quit comedy and two, you can know a lot of tea girl. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I probably would have quit comedy and I 100% do not think unless God had other plans. I do not think I would be where I'm at right now if I didn't go to New York. Wow. New York changed my absolute fucking life. Like one month, and it had that I'm, big of an impact. I met the and this the most incredible, incredible, incredible people, comedians. Um, I had some friends. Allison O'Connor was living out there. I was staying with her. Hope Carew was there. That's where I met Yadoye Travis. That's where I met Niles Abstin, which Niles has done so much for me mm-hmm. that like I he is just an incredible he's he is just the most amazing hardworking, and, and just genius genius yeah. guy so he definitely um put my name on the door some certain things and, and gave me opportunities and um yeah just a lot of comics out there I met just I made a lot of really good connections with like good friends like yeah. absolute good friends and then it just kind of you know, carried on, and then, you know, one thing, and they, hey, do you want to do this? Hey, let's do this, let's do that, and then boom, 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 and then it just kind of, and yeah, that's kind of how I, huh. it's happened for me, really, I, I would say a lot of my success, I definitely uh, give to my friends in comedy that have not only, like, you know, nice to me, and we're friends, but, like, they truly, truly, truly believed in me, like, mm-hmm. some of these people did don't need anything from me, like, at all, they, like, they don't need anything from me, they just genuinely were, like, you you are a star. Like we gotta get you to where you need to be. Yeah. So I'm so grateful, so thankful. And that happened in New York. And it was just beautiful. I had never been to New York and it was it was great. Like I've never seen I'm like the rats are literally footballs. Like they're <laughs> they like it's huge. it's insanity. It's and I'm like I'm surprised with like I, they should have like I'm like, why y'all looking for food? Just set up a stand and like start charging. Like it's insanity. It's crazy. I got uh, uh my phone jacked. And uh, but I pulled a knife on them, so I got it back. <laughs> yeah, New York changed me. It did. I, I don't. I just walk in the street now. I don't look at red lights. I <laughs> I don't let people talk to me nightmare. on the street. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So at the end of that month, is that when COVID hit, or was you just... I'm, so what had happened was I moved. I moved back to Houston because. And I, oh, also, I was, yeah, I was feeling very discouraged by that time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, like, Austin comedy wasn't where it is now. It wasn't. Yeah. So I was kind of feeling discouraged because I just felt kind of, like, stuck. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't want to be stuck. There's more I need to do. Um, and uh, so after New York, I moved to Houston uh, because there was a uh, guy I was seeing at the time and so it just kind of made sense because he lived there and I was like, well, I'm from here and I don't really want to go back to Austin. Mm-hmm. So I was like, maybe this is just, maybe take a little break here and like really like sit down and figure out New York or LA. Then by that time, and so then I got a, a job out in Houston, a pretty good job. And then at that time I was like, okay, let's save up for LA. I, I just, I don't know. I was like, I can't live in New York. I was like, I like it. Mm-hmm. I love the people there. I love my friends, but it just made more sense to me. Because I also want to do acting, because I'm an actress as well. Which acting is in New York, but it's more like broad. Like if you want to, yeah. be, it's more like Broadway and you know things like that. Um, or if, if you want to play like a dead person on, you know, see <laughs> Law and Order or something, you know. Um, so yeah, so it was like around that time where I was just saving up money, working to move to LA. That's when COVID hit. Ah. Yeah, and okay. it was just. <sighs> and that's why I had the mental confusion that oh, she's a Houston comic, right? Even though I had seen you in austin well you're fine you're one of the good ones because people still think i live in houston mm. six years later i know you recently posted something. yeah because literally like, everyone's like oh so how's houston i'm like <laughs> i don't know what makes y'all think i live in i'm not saying you gotta like check like check for me right. and, but it's like come on like because i literally post in the, location the location on my photos and i'm like i know y'all looking at my photos yeah. <laughs> Y'all see the location, because sometimes I'll put the actual place, Austin, or I'll put, like, you know, your dad's basement. Like, I'll, I'll do, which is concerning that that's even an option as a location. Yeah, People should that. investigate that. But, yeah, it's like, no, I don't live there. <laughs> I, I, li- I moved seven years ago. Seven years. But, yeah. Yeah. So. 
Okay. Let's take a little pause break here for the card game. And maybe I should learn from you and not plug the name of the card game, but then it just kind of doesn't make sense. But uh, Yeah, I thought I was like, oh, they got you a sponsorship no, girl. No, no, no. We, it's no. about the coin. This no. is why I ask for, you know, donations. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Please donate. Uh, okay. So you're going to pick a card. Just point to it. Oh, that one. That one. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to read that to you in a moment. And you're going to read the question. It's an open-ended question. And you're going to read it to me. And I'll answer it. Okay, dokes. Okay, I can look at it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wish I could still get away with... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, this is so dumb. Be truthful. Uh, oh, I am going to be truthful. <laughs> I was at an event yesterday. Uh, I'm sure you've performed at, at the ballroom at Spider House countless times. Mm-hmm. So they, I was at an event, and I, I went up to speak, and they have, like, this box for you to step up onto mm-hmm. to get onto the stage. Oh my God! I needed somebody's hand because they're so tall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. You're. No. You're right. Yeah. You're right. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And then to come down, like my first foot landed, and it's like everybody was quiet, so it like crashed noise into <laughs> the room, and I'm like, I wish, because I want people to know that even though I can't do stairs now, uh, I used to do. They used to do this uh, climb up Frost Bank as a fundraiser for. Oh my uh, gosh! I can't remember if it was lung cancer or something and i used to do this like every few years climb all the way to the top through the stairs oh my god i'm like god damn it i used to be able to climb stairs were you a firefighter you know firefighters do that on 9 11 yes they and firefighters did that event to fully gear yeah oh my gosh flights jeez i only know that because i dated one (laughs) but because he had health insurance so yeah yeah Yeah. so i wish that i could still go upstairs i mean but that's that's insane and the fact that you even did that yeah. is like remarkable it's insane all right oh this should be fun okay so your question leah is it's hard for me to say yes to dot 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 uh <laughs> like everything <laughs> um it's hard for me to say what is it hard because to... i don't do anything i don't want to do yeah, you kind of seem... You know? <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard for me to say yes to, like, m- men. Mm. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm just very direct and straightforward. Like, if, you know, like, oh, yeah, like, last night I did a show, and then after the show I went to get something to eat but I stopped by this bar to see if my friend was there and then this guy was like hitting on me and all that kind of stuff and we were talking and then I was like can you buy you know buy me some pizza and he bought me pizza and he's like want to come over and I was like no and he's like you sure I was like no Hmm. I was like yeah I'm sure get away get your hand off my get your hand off my ankle you know (laughs) no I'm damn I'm sorry I wish I I don't yeah it's hard for me to say yes to I think it, that's fine. I I respect that you like you don't say yes to things that you don't want to do. I just do, I just don't because uh, fun fact, I guess this can kind of go into it. I surprisingly, again, people don't, don't they know about me, but they don't. I have excruciating, excruciating, excruciating medical anxiety. Mm. Like it is, it is really, really bad. And so sometimes, yeah, I don't say yes to like a lot of events or friend gatherings yeah. and sometimes even well not, not really like not done a show for that um but i've definitely performed a little differently mm-hmm. i feel because of my anxiety um but yeah like i i just i lots of things make me anxious and so i just don't really say yes i i guess what i will say it's kind of harder for me to say no sometimes it's way it's really it's not so much as like hard for me to say yes it's more so like hard for me to say no huh which is a weird thing like i can't like shows i can't turn on a show like even doing this like i can't i can't turn i can't say no to things that i know i can do unless just for some whatever reason like yesterday like i was so anxious yesterday because i was like i told her i could do it today and i can't and now you know (laughs) and driving over here while sweating and and having boob sweat drip down (laughs) to my feet i'm like oh (laughs) so yeah well thank you i appreciate that you of course of course I do what I can. Yeah. 
Uh, you, at some point along the years of, of being in Austin, got the attention of Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Uh, um, I don't remember which what the first year was that you got attention, but I feel like you've been on Moon Tower several years. Uh, do you, do you do you remember the first time you got picked for Moon Tower? I do. I got a call, I think, from Colleen. I think Colleen called me. And it was funny because I was in California at the time doing shows. And I was actually headed to the airport. Huh. And I get this call. And I was like, who is this? This was like back. This I know it was a long time ago because this is when you answered block calls. And then Apple was like, oh, no, we got to fix this. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was an unknown number. I didn't know the number. So I, and I, I had heard of Colleen. I've heard of Moon Tower, yeah. you know. But I didn't know what that was really. Uh-huh. And so, um, yeah, uh, she calls me and she's like, hey, so, <laughs> call me so funny. She kind of was like, yeah, I don't know anything about you, but Matt Bearden loves you, so you want, <laughs> which I loved it. I mean, like, it was, it was very direct. It was like, yeah, you know, um, so, yeah, I was like, and I'm just like, this is crazy. And yeah, Matt Bearden, Matt Bearden definitely was one of the first comedians that really would always like pull me aside and be like, you got it. Like nice. you, you are really, really good to this day. I see him and you know, it's just like such a proud yeah. father daughter moment, you know, <laughs> cause he's just like, yeah, this, you know, I, I knew it, yeah. you know? So yeah, they gave me the call and they were like, can you do these, this show, that show, whatever. And so, yeah. And then that's when I did my first moon tower, which was like 2000. Oh, I couldn't tell you 19, 20. I don't know. Whenever yeah. it was, it was, it was, the, it was the year before, for the pandemic okay. yeah and then i did the last two i think or the last yeah the jfl one and the one before that i think i've done three yeah that's all i can that's remember great. that's great um so yeah that wasn't exciting that was really yeah different it was just again i'm I, comedy was never a thing i always go back to that it's like stand-up was never something that like you know i thought was it gonna be my career yeah but it is. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I want to ask you, and, I, and I'm going to paint the picture of what you did, your very first, I almost want to call it a sketch because it was stand-up, but it was also a bit of a sketch for our online show. And thank you for doing that. Uh, it's like imprinted in my brain what, <laughs> what you did. You did a few. Oh, Lord, what them. did I do? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you did a few for us. And, uh, I love that. The first one was just oh, chef's kiss. It was really? so, so good. Damn, what did so, I do? Uh, we did these online shows, and we're so, uh, you know, now everybody pans and, and disses on them, but they had a purpose, and for us, our purpose was, well, we've got all of these comics that we know and Colton new comics across the country. Mm-hmm. And we just want people to have a way to perform it if helped. they want to. It really and, did. Yeah. yeah. So what you did, Leah, was you did a stand-up set. Okay? <gasps> okay. A straight-up stand-up set. But you had a microphone. Okay. And through the course of your set, the microphone changed. But every single microphone... Oh. <laughs> was a let's say a personal massage device. <laughs> I was like I know it's gonna be some psycho shit that I did I just don't remember what because you never addressed it which is why you know it's that it's that misdirection thing <laughs> but you're not addressing it it's just very natural for you to just you know you oh. I don't know what your collection size is but I'm like damn girl it's increased it's it's increased. It's been a tough, <laughs> tough road. Okay, it's, it's some dark days, Valley. <laughs> so you doing that and just—it ah, was just so hilarious because we're so. all cracking up, and you're just like, and this is a joke set up punchline, joke set up punchline. Oh my gosh, I do. So I remember that now. I need. I should do that again. I should bring it back. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and then since I'm not sure, I have seen you live but you know i have just that and then of course watching watching the the don't tell uh that's when i realized oh my god misdirection is just her her strength undoubtedly and and just you have you do have a stage presence and you're very you. bubbly and whatever i'll, I'll stop with all the, the compliments. no please 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 <laughs> i swear i don't crave attention i really don't it just <laughs> So you couldn't even help yourself. You're just yeah, like, oh, I know, I know. Right? <laughs> thank um, you. Though. 
uh, I want to ask you something that I've been asking comics recently, and I'm, I'm trying to tweak this a little bit because I, anybody that listens, I want them to kind of listen for this joke and seek it out when you perform it on stage. So um, the question is, tell, think about your favorite joke right now, like your absolute favorite joke that you tell. And uh, I want you to tell me why you love it so much. And the, the, the thing I want to change about the way, because I just stopped and asked just that question, but I want people to be, like, be hungry to watch you on stage and think about this joke and then like really appreciate it. So tell me what you have this joke labeled in your, you know, whatever your system is for, for all of your jokes, but don't say anything else about the joke. Does that make any sense? I think so. Like, don't give the joke away. Right. But I'll put it this way for all you curious listeners out there. <laughs> it's, it's not my favorite joke as far as, like, skill set, but it is so fucking funny to me. I, I love it so much because it is so ridiculous. Uh, it involves teeth. Okay. It, there's, there's a, there's the, the word teeth is in okay. it. And uh, why I love it? Yeah, yeah. I love this joke because I feel like it is literally such a representation of me. It's a mis- it's a misdirect joke, of course, uh-huh. but it's so absurd. Like I love absurdity. Yeah. I I love shit that does not make sense. Like stuff that kind of like how my Instagram, how I kind of do it. Like I just I like stuff that's just. I like I was that kid that loved when like the universes and cartoons meshed, you know, like Jimmy Neutron's like smoking weed with Johnny, you know, uh, SpongeBob. It's like uh-huh. I I like that kind of, I like when stuff is like, you know. Um so yeah, it's just it's it's ridiculous. It, it's absurd. It's hilarious. Uh-huh. It is so funny and it involves teeth. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so go check check out and her her shows so you can maybe yeah. see see it. It's a favorite. <laughs> uh, what I've loved in asking this question is how often people say, it's not my funniest joke, but I love it so much because it's so dumb or cheesy. Or uh-huh. It's just like people really have a, like a love for just owning the things that they, they love. And, yeah, because yeah. in comedy, it's like, for, like, for instance, do I love, I mean, also, like when you do stand up for a while, especially and you perform a lot, you do get tired of some of your own jokes. You're performing these jokes all the time to to the point like like my don't tell set. I couldn't watch it for a while because it's just it's cringy to me mm. because it's wow. like one I hate watching myself. I hate hearing myself. Yes, I'm telling y'all. I never want these a conceited, attention seeking, talented, beautiful, gorgeous diva. <laughs> but sometimes I like in a weird way don't want to see myself. And uh, it was just like really shocking, I know. Um, but yeah, I just, I hate, um, I hate watching myself. I hate hearing myself. And it's like, I, these are jokes I've done before, you know? So it's just kind of like, ugh, watching myself. But also it's like, that's because I wrote them. Like, y'all don't know my joke. You don't know my, you know. Um, so it's like, yeah, you, you get to that point in comedy sometimes with certain jokes. And so like, but you're like, but that joke works. This joke kills. Like, I don't really want to do this joke anymore because yeah. I'm tired of telling it. But it destroys. So it's like, Okay, what's your best joke? Okay, well, that's like my best joke, mm-hmm. but it's not my favorite joke. My favorite joke is the shit that makes me giggle because it's not necessarily about them. It's about me. And some people will base their best joke off of how the, the reaction they get. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that's not, at least for me, that's not necessarily my purpose. Um, like, okay, and I see your candle with... LaShonda uh-huh. Lester on there, RIP to the queen. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first started stand up, I noticed that like literally I was like the only, first I was like the only black person in the city at the time. Like the city has changed so much, so much. It's really incredible just yeah. to like just watch everything. Um, yeah, I was like, there's like, n- no black people here at all. And especially not at comedy. Like it was like maybe one black guy. And like even before Lando, you know, pulled up, it was like, I don't know, some black dude and me. And I was definitely the only black woman until Jasmine Ellis pulled up. Love Jasmine. She's fantastic. Uh, Rachel Hall, who's incredible, um, too. So, yeah. So I felt very, like, nervous and outcasted and kind of scared almost. And, you know, just kind of like, how do I, like, do stand-up in a city where, like, you know, my com- – my just – no one here looks like me. You know what I mean? And so uh, I heard about LaShonda. And so, because, um, of course, she was, like, just taken off. Yeah, it was, like, LaShonda and then, like, me. But, of course, I was, I'm not even going to compare myself to her at that time. 
Um, and so I reached out to her. I'll never forget this. I reached out to her on Facebook, and I was like, hey, can we, like, meet up? And uh, can we, like, talk? And she was like, sure. And we met. It's not there anymore, but we met up on the east side at Monkey. I remember it was, like, called Monkey Joe's or something. It was, like, a really popular coffee shop. Yeah. She met up with me, and we and she gave me about an hour or two of her time. She had a show that night too, so she's like, "Yeah, we could chat before you know my show." And and she gave that time to me, and we just talked and talked, and and I was like, you know, she gave me some really really great advice, and I remember asking, I was like, "Well, how do I know if a joke is funny?" And she just looks at me, and she's like, "Well, bitch, if you think it's funny, it's funny." And I was like, damn, that makes so much sense because again, I think a lot of comments. Like, I'm trying to make you, I want to make you laugh, I want to make you laugh, yeah, but it's like. Yeah. Sure, of course. Yeah, we want to make people laugh, but I think that authenticity of the joke and the and the root of the joke that makes you giggle, mm -hmm. then it's gonna make them giggle because it's already something that you know is funny. Yeah. Versus just being like, oh well, I know people like this because I I feel like every comedy com com comedian tries it. I've tried it before. I'm like, oh, let me talk about all this corny ass shit that I hear going around, and it didn't work because that's not me. That's not yeah. my stand up. My stand up is my life, my experiences. And that's one thing too. My comedy is dark. It is misdirectful. <laughs> it is chaotic. It is beautiful. It is fantastic. It's like a gumbo, you know? <laughs> but everything that I talk about, I don't talk about shit that I don't know about. Like, you know, I remember one time um, I did uh, this show and they're like, can you do trans jokes? So I was like, I don't know. I don't like, that's not wow. something that I'm a part of or no. I got trans friends, but it's like, not. A, I'm not about to put a whole special out about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, no dig, but like no shade, but like no, I'm, I'm, I don't talk about things that like I haven't experienced. So when I do talk about races and sex and you know my body and and and, and the economy and my tr my trauma, it's it's me. So that's why it's like I don't, I never try to offend anybody. I don't, I don't think I've ever offended anybody. But also it's like that's my truth, man, and it, I'm sticking to it, and that's just what it's gonna be, yeah. you know. I, I tell you what, uh, the conversations that I've had the sooner somebody like says I'm not going to try to mimic somebody else or you know follow somebody else's model for how they do comedy I I got to figure out who I am and how I write and how right. I, I do my stand-up they're so much happier oh I mean, of course of yeah course you're, you're riddled with anxiety and I acknowledge that sure but am I know, shaking yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah figure out what I think that's the key is figure out what makes you laugh and all of the talent and the practice that you put into it, that's going to translate for the audience. Yeah. And, you know, and even if it's, it is a topic that's, uh, you know, a topic that is maybe touchy or whatever. If, if, if it just comes from a genuine place, like you can, you don't have to mimic somebody else. It'll just naturally come, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And this scene, as, as you know, because you've seen the before scene and the mm -hmm. current scene, I think there are a lot of people still that are trying to mimic a certain style. Sure. And, you know, it's going back to, and now I don't remember if we said this uh, on recording or before, but the whole notion of woke, like being, mm -hmm. like, you know, just be funny. And it's not about, you know, saying the most controversial right. things just because you think, oh, if I say something really offensive to a group of people or, you know, it, it, it talks down to a group of people or punches down, then that's how I can be funny. N not, no? No, I think, one prime example, one of my favorite comedians is Dave Attell. I love, 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 love Dave Attell because he's a misdirect comic and the stuff he says is so... Ups I mean, just, you know, it's just so toxic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's great. And I, I think the problem is, since you asked what the problem is. Um, <laughs> what is the problem? The, I'll tell you. The, the problem is, Valerie, you know, again, it goes back to that thing of like, you have people that truly want to do stand up, that study the craft, that, that really are like, yeah, they're in that zone of like, okay, who am I as a stand, stand up comic? Like, you know. There are people that take that journey, and then there are people, and of course, you may be inspired, you know, by people and things like that, um, but then you have people that just want to feel like they fit in somewhere, some people that just want to be famous, yeah. some people that just, they see somebody else do it online or on TV, and so like, I can do that too, and it's not, it, and it's like, it's not, comedy isn't taken seriously as like a, as a career or as like a, um, Actually, I wouldn't even say a career as a passion. It's taken more as like a like a social 
kind of deal, you know. I'm not saying that everybody that does an open mic has to have that dream of becoming, a, you know. Look, if you doing an open mic keeps you from, you know, I don't know, killing people or whatever the case may be, cool. Like, do if it's a hobby for you, if it's just something you like to do, that's wonderful. But respect it. And so that's why you got those people where they'll, they'll see it like a David Tell. They'll see a David Tell and be like, oh, Dave just goes up there and just talks shit. No, he doesn't. Yeah. He's a he's a professional. He is a professional. He is so good at what he does is that he can talk about this kind of stuff and it programs in your brain as, oh, he's just up there. Yeah. Like he just got out of bed one day and was like, oh, let me just talk about stuff. Right. Because a lot, of com- a lot of people think that's what comedy is. No, I, we write. We write, we rehearse, we practice. And then over time, it becomes smooth. It becomes, yeah. you know, then it becomes a good little chunk of disrespect, you know. Right. But it, it's, you know, yeah, it's like, so like you said, yeah, you, especially, and you know, yeah, it is happening in Austin right now. But, I mean, it makes sense. It's just, it's, Austin's hot right now. She's the new girl in town, you know she what I'm is. saying? She She's she's catching her rounds, you know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so everyone just needs to be in her. They need to be in her. They don't, they, they don't really know who she's, what she's about. They uh-huh. just need to be in her and yeah. say that they were in her. And, um, yeah, which is, like, crazy because, you know, well, I won't get into that. But, um, yeah, so it's like, yeah, you have a lot of that happening. You have a lot of people that have a lot of comics they look up to, and they just want to be like that. And a lot of these comics, comics that they're, they look up to are edgy. So they go, oh, if I just go on stage and say this most disrespectful thing – it's gonna, you know, it's like, no, this famous person that you're mimicking can say that because they're worth over $2 billion, and they also said it tastefully, and what they're talking about is more so personal to them than just them. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That's No, I think that's great. That's my outlook on it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you have the people that are like, hey, I don't know if I want to have this as a career, but let me figure it out, and let me actually study it, mm-hmm. and, you know do what i can yeah so and then you have me who's just like i woke up and i'm a star it's like oh i'm so tired <laughs> oh i didn't choose this life it chose me you know but yeah that's all. are you producing any shows now or is that something that you're gonna go back to ever well actually i don't give too much info Ooh. but look out for a hear me bitch <gasps> situation happening Ooh. um i actually was talking with the the venue Ooh, did she say venue venue is a big venue. that's a big place um today about it I want to do something with Hear Me Bitch very soon. Hopefully, before it gets too cold. Um, yeah, before it gets too cold. So maybe, like, hopefully by, like, November. But I will say what's kind of weird is, like, my... Go- like, this whole viral thing has been, like, insane. It is, it is... It's one of those things where, like, I'm happy about it. I mean, I'm just speechless almost. But I am kind of, like, I kind of knew this was going to happen. Like, I, I remember when I got off stage from doing my set, I felt it. I was like, oh, bitch, you did that. I was like, you about to blow up, girl. It's a great I, set. I felt it. I felt, I have, because I have fun. That's what it was. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you stress yourself out sometimes. So I can't speak for everyone, but like for me, I do stress myself out sometimes with certain shows. And even if I do a great show, I'll still be like, I didn't really do that well because I just didn't really have fun with it. Because I was just two in my head, just trying to, you know, make a good impression or whatever the case may be. I I just had fun. That set. I was nervous. I was. I was definitely nervous sure. for sure. But I, I just had fun. And the crowd was just so beautiful and so good. And where did you record the set, by the way? Uh LA. It was okay. um I can't remember the place. I think the place is tagged. Um but it was a cute little cute little shop. Uh-huh. And um I knew I was gonna do good <laughs> because when I walked in, I saw the backdrop uh-huh. and I saw the colors and I was like <gasps> I was like, oh, bitch, oh, bitch, you about to, girl, I was like, yes, you about to look, it's going to be like art, it's going to be art, you're, you're going to be the, the centerpiece, art, I was like, my, 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 my uh, the pink on there was the pink that I was wearing, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, let's go, let's do this, so, yeah, and, um, but it's been crazy, like, uh, Bill Burr followed me <laughs> on Instagram, no, Bill Burr followed me, uh, Wayne Brady followed me, Questlove, Holy shit. Yeah, no, like they like big timers have been like hitting me up and just being like, "What? Like you're, you got something? Like you're really, really, really good." Um, uh, I don't know if I should say it just yet, but one very, 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 very great comedian uh, actually asked me to go on the road with him um, next month. I think next month. No, That's I keep amazing. thinking next month is November. Yeah, so it's been incredible. It's been really wonderful. It's been great. It's been it, it's 
it's just yeah, it's been um a lot, but I'm I'm happy and it's funny because I always I was like my my seventh year is gonna be good. My seventh I felt I was like my seventh wait, is this my seventh, sixth year? I think seventh year. Yeah, this is two thousand three. Twenty three. I started two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. So yeah, seven years. I felt I was like seven's gonna be good. I was like, I don't know what's gonna happen. But seven's gonna be good. So I'm really happy and very grateful and very excited and yeah, still anxious, but you know, hopefully yeah. once the checks come in, that'll pass. Exactly. <laughs> once you can get the car fixed. You, yeah, can y'all please donate yeah, to Call Me Wham and to me? Yeah. My AC decided to be on some fuck shit. And yeah. oh, she, sorry, I don't know if I can say that on there. Yes, you can. Okay, yeah, so see, yeah, that's the thing. Everyone thinks that comedians are all rich and famous. No, we have ACs that don't fucking work. And, and, to, and that's why I gotta come to the shows and, and give us money, especially yeah. be on the strike. There's no money. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing coming in really. So, yeah, comedy don't pay shit until you like start doing this, you know? Right. right. Yeah. Right. So. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you want people to know about you? Um, I don't know. I think, yeah. I, I, mm -mm. <laughs> Send me money, please. Give yeah. me money. Um, but yeah, I'm very, I'm very down to earth and 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 oh, and very friendly. So if you want to like message me on Instagram, something nice, I'll read it. Yeah. And. Yeah, because that, that's what's been happening a lot, too. It's funny. Like, I've been messaging, like answering people's messages, and they're like, oh, my gosh, you you messaged me back. And I was like, oh, honey, you don't even know how much debt I'm in right now. Like, but thank you for thinking highly of me. Uh, but I will say, like, I'm, I'm a very, 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 very down-to-earth person. I'm very, I'm probably a little too open. You know, I don't really, I mean, I, also, I guess, like, also, like, I grew up very sheltered, and I grew up very ashamed of just, like, everything about me. And I grew up very like, you don't say this, you don't do this, you don't do that. And, you know, now I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm in my, and also with that being said too, it's like, you can't tell me something or say something about me that I haven't even already said myself. Mm -hmm. It's like a little bit of freedom almost to, to for me. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, I'm very open about shit. And I, you know, I, I refuse to have people control my life or my happiness, you know, so. Yeah, so I, I say that because people, it's funny, like, people are, like, afraid to come up to me at shows. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. But I'm like, no, like, if you want to say hi to me, don't touch me, please, unless, like, <laughs> I'm a hugger, so, I, you know, if I'm going in for a hug, like, you know, yeah, yeah. but, like, don't fucking touch me. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a girl's girl, yeah. you know, I'm a, I'm a boy's mom, I'm a, a, I don't have a kid, I just date men, <laughs> and, you know, I just be out here. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All that's pretty right. much it. <laughs> Are you ready for your closing question? I am. Okay. Uh oh. One word to describe your future. Oh, bright. Mm -hmm. Just big, bright, beautiful, boss, bitching. Boss. It's it's all of it. It's just oh, it's gonna be beautiful. It's 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 going to be beautiful. It is already beautiful. God is already cooking it right now. He's like, I'm just gonna ship it out. Like it's that's, and that's what I've been kind of telling myself, too, like, when things are tough, like, with money or, you know, whatever, just life shit, it's like, girl, you don't even know. Yeah. So, oh, no, it's going to be bright. I'm, I'm going to come back and do this. Uh -huh. No, it's, my future is going to be so popping that people are going to be searching for this interview. They're going to be searching for this shit, which is beautiful, because that's going to get the numbers up, girl. They're going to uh -huh. be searching for this shit. And, they're gonna, and, they, and, they, and every time I say it, fuck and trans and, and, and bitch, and they're going to chop, they're going to mash that up, and they're going to make it. It's going to be crazy. It's just going to be a whole, like, they're going to make some shit, and it's going to be like, ah, 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 you know. So that's all crazy. People are going to be searching. They're going to be they're gonna be at home, uh -huh. jobless, trying to look for this and try to sound by shit and, and, and make it seem like I said some disrespectful yeah. shit yeah. about the Indians and, and, and every other word I said today. <laughs> so that's how beautiful and chaotic it's going to be. I know you spill a lot, of, a lot of tea. I will tell you, one of my dreams is that we show up in somebody's Wikipedia page yeah. when they become big. And uh, it's funny, I was just researching something yesterday and found my name as a Wikipedia Woo! reference, and I'm like, ooh -hoo, comedy wham. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is a great so. podcast. I, I, you know, I, I, do, I love seeing things grow. I've yeah. seen this grow. I've seen don't tell grow um like yeah. what don't tell is is so magical yeah. like it is and not even just the fact of like you know putting 
comedians that maybe, you know aren't famous on a platform to really should be showcased. But that team they got there, man, Kyle and and um, uh, I think it's Melissa. I hope that's her. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> just every but but it's like a hundred million of them. Like wow. and and everybody is just like in such a chaotic. I want to say chaotic, but you know, anytime you got 400 cameras and you got people and this, and anytime you're on a, on a set, yeah. there's a lot of things going on. It can be really like the energy. I feel like half the time the comics are more, you know, kind of frantic than the actual uh-huh. production. Like every, the, the vibe is beautiful. Everybody is so sweet, so attentive on their shit. They are on their shit. You send, they send a reply to your email before you even email it. Like they are like, <laughs> what they got going over there, man, cool. is incredible. Incredible, and I'm so thankful and so blessed for that opportunity. And I'm so blessed and thankful that I was able to work with them and work with like genuinely good, good people. So, yeah, no, I, and yeah, so I, just, I love seeing the growth yeah. with Comedy Wham, with them, with uh, I don't know what else has really been popping <laughs> besides me, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's been beautiful. Nice. All right. Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham presents Leah Sampson. Thank you. Uh, Leah, tell us where we can find you and plug those upcoming projects. Yes, you can catch me um, on uh, Instagram at official Leah Sampson, uh, TikTok Leah Sampson 2, and uh, Twitter uh, for for uh, um, written chaos, um, <laughs> uh, Leah underscore Sampson 1. Um, also, all my socials are in my link tree on my Instagram, uh, including OnlyFans, and uh, YouTube, and um, yeah, w- I watch my full Don't Tell comedy set on Don't Tell's YouTube page. It is out now. and it's um, really good. Thank you. I did not pay her to say that. No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I post everything on Instagram, so for any other upcoming shows and things like that, just check out my Instagram. Yeah. All right, very good. Well, we hope you've enjoyed learning about how Leah got to be a comedic genius today, just as much as I have. This has been Comedy Wham Presents Leah Sampson. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. Thank you, Leah. Thank you.